Alright, so I'm here in the studio with uh, DJ Sawandi. Or I don't want to say DJ Sawandi, I want to say Sawandi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good producer and DJ also. Sawandi, um, how did you get into music? Well, um, music was really, you know, it's here this all the time. You know, you started started playing music at a young age. Uh, but basically, yeah, it was my story, I guess, is no different from most, most people into music. Um, father was a musician, um, he's a musician and growing up <coughs> started me in started me in, in piano lessons from when, from when I was like about age four. Uh, but like most kids um, kinda rebelled against it because the music I was learning was, you know, classical stuff which I couldn't really relate to at the time, you know, I didn't really see the relevance of it. I wanted to kinda play stuff that I heard on the music I heard on the radio, you know. Um, so it kinda fizzled after a while when I realized they were wasting their money on, on the lessons. But well, it's funny because actually, it's listening to, actually, it's actually, my teens now, when I was actually listening to, started getting into a lot of rap music and stuff like that at the time, um, I was going through my father's record collection, some old jazz and some old funk and stuff, and I was hearing a lot of the, the songs that I was hearing in my favorite rap songs being sampled basically, you know, so it kind of set off a light bulb, you know, I was kind of wanting to kind of go backwards you now and see how they, how they did it. So in my teens, I was very interested in it, and my father had a little, um, computer set up at the time, you know, but that was like the early early nineties, late eighties. Um had like a old IBM PS2, you know, with a big five and a quarter inch floppy, floppy disk, yeah. <laughs> the floppy floppy disk, the real floppy disk I think. Um and yeah, so he had that while he was while he was at work and thing I used to sneak in and fiddle with it. And even when he was home to um me and him used to do some stuff with it. Um I think but then now around high school now school started to take precedence you know and studies and stuff so the music kind of doing so I was just listening basically and um, it wasn't like till after I think I basically finished university you now um, I really started to kind of pick back up on the actual creation aspect of music all through school I was really heavy into listening to music and very curious about how stuff was made but never had the time but that's how it starts so because you have to listen first Ah, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly, you know, exactly, exactly. And I was just, uh, like we were talking about earlier, I think um, a, a lot of the great producers, um, especially in the whole electronic music scene, the hip-hop scene, a lot of them were actually DJs before, you know, so they had that, the whole thing of listening to music and knowing music, you know, it's really, um, it's really crucial, you know, it helps, one helps the other, I think. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, um, you play a lot of world beats, because when I first came to the Village Cafe, it was the first time I really got a good taste of world beat music. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, the world beat is like mostly hip hop based and reggae based, right? Um, boy, the world beat thing is a, is a very funny thing. I don't even like the term world beat to be honest. Um, the whole thing with world beat thing, I, I, have to, I have to talk about DJ FIFA too, um, who is a really good friend of mine. She and I, uh, we actually started off doing some stuff. So everything I know about, basically about quote unquote DJ and I think I basically learned from her, you know what I mean? She uh, put me on a lot of this, uh, like I said, not world music, but music outside of the US, the Caribbean, the UK, you know, a lot of European music, a lot of African music, um, a lot of um, just indigenous music from all over the world. She put me on a lot of stuff like that, you know? So um, so the stuff we play, yeah, is some of that, um, but there's also a lot of electronic experimental stuff, you know, as well as some of my own stuff as well. Okay. All right. We're here in the studio with you now, and um, you've been showing me some of your tracks that you're working on for your upcoming album. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um. But just a quick question. What do you prefer? You prefer playing to a live crowd or being in the studio working on music? Ah, uh, boy. Um. I think I don't think I really have a fear. You know, I think I, I'm learning to enjoy both of them. You know, I think initially I was. Mostly, you know, a little bit of a recluse, you know, kind of like just be locked away, coming up with all kind of crazy stuff and, and you know, coming up with all these things. And, it, and it, it's kind of, it, after a while, it kind of got, um, started to feel a bit selfish, you know, I kind of wanted to share this, you know. And then, so I actually had a friend who was visiting from, from the UK and she was like, one day she was here, she was like, so one day we have a lot of music, why you don't um, think about trying to DJ, trying to share some of the music? And I was like, for real. So I started to do that as well as combine some of the stuff I was building and the actual playing the few the time the, the times I do get to play in front of an audience. I mean to get the reaction and 
and to, to introduce people to new music and people to come up and ask you, yo, who's this, who's that, you know what I mean? Um, that is really a, a wonderful feeling as well. So the whole thing of sharing the music, you know, so I think it's both ways, you know. I like being locked away at times to create and come up with stuff on my own, but at the same time, you know, discovering, you know, the, 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 the joy in, in sharing, you know, in sharing what you come up with and what you, what you discover. You know? Alright, so, so where you, where you playing mostly now? Um, any regular um, yeah, the, talk about? Um, yeah, the, uh, two regular um, things um, right now. Um, Say something, which is um, a, a, a poetry live music um, event um, at the Village Blues Bar right now. Um, put on it's, right now. It's every last Sunday, last Sunday of every month. I'm um, right now, and I basically play um, before the actual show starts, about well, an hour or two before the actual show starts, and then in between the acts to kind of keep you know seamless kind of kind of energy, you know, um, going on. Um, and also the other thing at Book of Philia, um, every last Friday, um, last Friday of every month, um, this thing we call World Beat Night. So we're basically um, string up and just play some music, very light background, you know, because it's basically a bookstore where you come and you sit down in your lounge. It's like kind of an after work um, Friday, Friday kind of vibe where people just come and chill, talk. So the music is kind of, you know, it's more soothing, it's a, you know, right, right. not too heavy, heavy right. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, those are the two main ones, the two regular ones. Yeah. I have a few of uh, other stuff going on every now and then. Okay. All right, as I said before, we're here and you and you, was, you were letting me listen to some of your tracks for the, for the album. Um, what, what does the album mostly consist of and when is it coming out? Uh, um, well, the album, um, it, it's basically finished, we, we, um, uh, well not finished, we're actually in the process of mixing down, mixing down, uh, mixing them down, or six, six tracks. Uh, who is we? Who are you working with? Alright, sorry, I yeah, work with, um, with, with David Kennedy, um, um, Intellect Entertainment, um, so it's, we're basically releasing it through Intellect Entertainment as a label. Um, I plan to sell it on, uh, on iTunes, uh, not iTunes, but iTunes, <laughs> Tunes. Um, so it's his online store, um, and it's going to be basically an online. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we release it through. To, we set it um, on iTunes. Basically, six tracks, um, all instrumental, um, calling it the world within. Uh, it was created solely on. It was kind of at the point I wanted to prove to myself. I was kind of created based on a laptop and um, an MPD, which is basically a MIDI controller, um, and it's just kind of this electronic synthy. Uh, there's some elements of dub hip hop. Um, you know, um, some electronic, you know, kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's basically, in terms of coming out, um, we're looking for, but we're working on some other stuff. There's some other acts on the label that we're trying to get their stuff out first. So, um, but definitely before the end of the year, um, before the end of the year, probably more like September, October, that time. Okay, that's not too mm -hmm. far from yeah, now. Not too far. Uh, yeah. That's fine. Indeed. All right, so. I want to thanks for being on the show. Yeah, my other. Um, I don't need to talk over here. So. Yeah, yeah, man. Definitely, definitely honor and privilege, man. I mean, um, for you to actually reach out, you know what I mean? To actually come and ask me to be a part of this, man. It's a real honor. Alright. Yeah. And um, after this, we're going to play a mix from you. Yeah, so, definitely, definitely give thanks. Hope everyone enjoys. Hey, that was my interview with DJ Sawandi. Hey, right about now we're getting into the second hour of the show. And for the next hour, you'll be listening to the guest mix from DJ Sawandi. Hey, once again, this is Beat Street with me, your host DJ Elmo, coming to you from Kingston, Jamaica. Thank you. 